Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSR, HealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSR HealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. Uh, you're in for a place of inspiration, education, and hope for a kinder, healthier, and sustainable world, because that's what we're about here at this program. Uh, on the show, we also we join together in community to uplift each other, explore new ways to care for each other, ourselves, each other, and our planet, and and basically also just have a good time. Today's program is made possible because of the generous support of our show sponsor, New Roots Herbal, one of the most respected natural health companies here in Canada. Uh, it was so it was fantastic. Just this last week or so, I was able to um, uh, be together with the team at the CHFA West Expo. This is like the biggest natural health um, expo here in Canada, and they have some exciting new products. So if you're wanting to learn more about New Roots Herbal and some of their new products as well as some of their ongoing long, long time lasting wonderful products like their Acidophilus Ultra be sure to visit their website at newroots.com that's N-E-W-R-O-O-T-S dot com and if you'd also like to be a sponsor or support the vision of this show by making a donation, um, uh, being a sponsor in any other way, contact me directly through my TeresaNicasio.com website. And my website is spelled T-H-E-R-E-S-A, and like Nancy, I-C-A-S-S, like Sam, I-O is an octopus.com. <clears throat> So, continuing with our mental health series, including today's show, we have been we've been having some incredible folks. Uh, you may have heard when Dr. Irvin Yalom was on uh, recently, and Dr. Jill Carnahan. Um, we are, next we, next time we're going to also have another um, very very notable person. We're going to have Dr. Debbie Joffe Ellis on. Uh, she's going to be talking about the work of her late husband, the grandfather of CBT, cognitive behavior therapy, Dr. Albert. Ellis, um, and how she's going to talk about how she's keeping alive his pioneering paradigm shifting um, REBT work and the memory of his personhood. I'm really looking forward to that show. Uh, I met Debbie for the first time at the Evolution of Psychotherapy Conference just in December, and um, she, you know, she was talking about how, he, you know, Ellis, Albert Ellis, he was such a sweetheart. Most people don't know what a sweetie he was, so we're going to hear more about that next time. For today's program, we have with us the author and founder, I'm so excited, of the Society for Recovering Dormats, uh, Ivy Tobin. She's going to make us laugh and maybe cry. Um, she's going to share with us uh, um, you know, some of her favorite tips to help you transform yourself from being a doormat to being able to be you, um, you know, really be the unique person that you're meant to be. With the Women's March and the Stand Up and the Me Too movement, this interview couldn't be more timely. And I'm telling you, when I, I think it was about a year ago, I came across the uh, Society of <laughs> Recovering Doormats, and I was, I was reading about it, and I said, oh, my God, I've got to have this woman on the show. So I contacted her through social media, and here we are today. I'm so, so thrilled uh, to, uh, to be able to share her with you. A little bit about Ivy. Uh, before launching her career as a writer, uh, she started out as an actor in New York City. You may have seen her uh, when she made appearances, uh, most notably in films and television series like One Life to Live, Another World, Spin City, uh, The Secret of My Success, Texas, A Stranger Among Us, and The Quiz Show. Uh, today, Ivy's going to show with us how and why she started this amazing society, Society for Recovering Dormats, and how she transformed herself from being a people pleaser into an empowered woman with a voice and mission to help others like herself get off the floor, as she likes to say, and learn to love themselves. Ivy, thank you so much for joining us today. 
Well, Teresa, it is totally my pleasure. Um, I love your show. I love your whole platform. And um, I hope that I can uh, live up to all of those accolades that you generously <laughs> shared yeah. with your viewers, I mean, with your listeners. Yeah, and, of course. Um, Anyway, so, yeah, you know, I think it's very uh, meant to be that this show is happening on March 8th, International Women's Day, and the marches, and I believe in uh, signs and following your life um, according to the signpost and your gut. So it's all good. This is well, absolutely know, the perfect day for us to connect together. Yeah, well, you know, it's kind of funny you should mention that because this seems to keep happening. I have not been planning it this way, but I guess uh, uh, some higher force has been guiding it. When we had uh, last year, we had Christine Blanchett come on, and she was talking about um, um, her experiences around uh, disordered eating and anorexia and so forth, mm-hmm. and um, it was on the same week, the exact same week, as wow. uh, Eating Disorders Awareness Week. We hadn't planned it for that way, but um, this is uh, yeah, one more of those awesome signs, and uh, it's, it's just perfect. So, you know, given the, the, the um, we're going to be talking more about this sort of theme as well, uh, but let's just, can we just start, if um, you could sure. share with us a little bit about how you came up with the idea of starting uh, the Society for Recovering Doormats. You know, what, you know, what was your well, why for this? It wasn't my intent to actually, I'm going to start a society for doormats. It was nothing like that. Um, My background is in writing. I was an actor in New York for a long time, and I was also a writer. And um, I had worked on this novel for about eight years, and... In between, I raised a family, was a stay-at-home mom, and um, I wrote a novel, and then I was trying to get it published. And I got about 100 rejection notices, and I was fed up. I couldn't do it anymore, so I said, you know, I just can't do this anymore. I went to my therapy which I have had about 15 different wonderful therapists over the course of my years on this planet. And um, I said, look, you know, I I just can't do this anymore. Um, I'm sick of these rejections. It just is, you know. And he said to me to do something else, just to put the book away and do something else. And I was like, you know, very overwhelmed, and I'm, I'm not going to write another book. I just, you know, I can't take this rejection. He goes, no, don't write a book. <clears throat> Why don't you go on social media and just do a page and talk about something that, you know, you're really good at. So I didn't, I mean, Teresa, I didn't even know how to do, like, uh, email or Facebook book really I was completely computer challenged and I was like well what am I what would I even talk about I'm not very good at anything he goes, well, come on everybody's good at something so well let's see I'm not cleaning not uh, crocheting knitting not, I said you know what I'm a great people please pleaser I guess I'm a good doormat. And he looked at me and said, well, why don't you go online and talk about that? Wow. Well, I... That is so funny. <laughs> what? Is, yeah, so so you're you know, that East Coast, because you're from, like, New Jersey, right? I'm sorry. You're, you're this, from the East Coast. This, this happened, from... um, actually, uh, we had moved from New Jersey right. to Florida. Right. And um, that was uh, with my husband got transferred with his business, and I spent a lot of time writing and trying to, you know, submit my stuff. And I was uh, with a wonderful therapist in on the west coast of Florida, and um, he's the one, you know, that said that. And uh, then I just like thought about it, and for like three months, 
I was like, well, maybe I can do this. I don't know. What name would I give it? What? I had no clue what I was doing. I mean, yeah, that's just, yeah. zero. That's amazing. So, what? So, but you, but you were on to something. I mean, you know, it's like, so, so that was a few years ago, and and you know, now we have this, you know, the whole women's march, the Me Too movement. Can you talk a little bit about how this society that you've developed, the Society for Recovering Doormats, ties in with the Me Too movement? Well, we're a group uh, of people that have um, been uh, just a just uh, sucked in to the narcissistic, self-serving people with agendas because we're too trusting, too nice, we're people pleasers. And um, in the Society for Recovering Doormats, it's a place where people can come to share, to talk about themselves, to see they're not alone, that they need to stand up and speak out. And mm -hmm. um, that is a very common uh, note and a common thread for almost anybody who is attracted to my platform, to my groups, mm -hmm. over, you know, my blog and over on Facebook. And now I have another group within Facebook called the Society for Recovering Doormats, No More Narcissist Group. So oh, interesting. we have a lot of people over there that are standing up, speaking out, venting. Um, and, you know, it just is very parallel to what's going on with the, uh, the whole Me Too movement. Right. I, mean, I started this five years ago, uh, not really a clue where it was going or where it was headed very organically to just um, engage myself do something different than submit my book and get rejections, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. ultimately I did tie in to my, uh, the Society for Recovering Doormats. I reframed it, and a year and a half to two years later, I published it. So, right, and, and that's a, My Life as a Doormat, a great book, right. beautiful book, yeah. Thank so you. you yeah. Thank so some of you may be familiar with that, and that's, and that's where you fictionalize. You know, you, you kind of brought your own autobiographical story, but you, but you fictionalized it with another character, your, your alter ego, I think you'd uh, describe it as um, uh, Rose Gardner. And Rose you want to talk a little bit about, you know, uh, what you're kind of what you're trying to do with that book, you know, who, you know who you think, um, you know, how you book, think. Of, yes, the book is um, a fictional memoir. Rose Gardner is a fictional character. It is a fictional account of a young girl struggling in Manhattan during the 1980s. Now, of course, people write about what they know. And, um, you know, I just interjected a lot of my personal experiences into the book. But, and Rose Gardner is my alter ego in the book, but is Rose Gardner me? N not 100%. Um, mm. Are the characters in the book real people? Not at all. They're fictional. Every single person in that book is a fictional character, an amalgamation of people I've met, people I've seen, people I know, but it isn't one, uh, you know, one person that is really real. So mm -hmm. it, it really is not my, it's not my autobiography, but it, um, you know, you write about what you know. I don't, I'm not going to write a math book. Mm -hmm. I'm certainly not going to write a science book. Mm -hmm. So... I wrote um, stories that happened somewhat, uh, you know, kind of, sort of like what's in the book, but not really. But if you were to read the book, the most authentic chapter in there, if you want to say, what chapter could you, in this book is, like, can you relate to the most and is closest to your experiences in New York, I'd have to say chapter 10 you the girl so that so, that pretty much happened but a lot of things are changed in it because it is fiction 
Mm-hmm. So, so if someone were to be picking up that book and reading, um, mm-hmm. maybe someone who's passionate about what's you know with the Me Too, maybe they've had experiences of being abused or or you know having a hard time speaking up. Um, how how might that book be? How might that book move them? How might it be uh, a, a, you know something that would that would touch their lives in a meaningful way? Well. In the book, Rose Gardner is very naive and very much a people pleaser and thinks that everybody is good, and she ends up uh, being victimized by the bad boyfriend, the bad roommates, the bad situations, the bad job, and her parents are kind of unsupportive. So uh, I'm not going to um, give away the ending of the book, but... Rose struggles. It's very hard. It's not um, a cakewalk for her. But by the end of the book, Rose manages to uh, come out on top. Yeah. So and that that theme of that theme of empowerment, I think, is part of right. the, the thread that that goes through all that you're doing with your society and with the book correct. and and, and it's, with that. It's people that are struggling. And think, oh, I can't do this. How can I do this? I, I don't have the confidence. I, I just, you know, they don't have any faith in themselves. All they have to do is follow Rose Gardner on this journey in New York. And at the end, she manages to land on her feet. And if she can do it, Anybody can do it. So can you, all of you who are listening right now. Um, so just another question, and you know, yes. we may it may go into into the next uh, segment, but uh, okay. we'll see how we do on time. Um, you know, because you you were working in the industry, you were working in the the film industry and the in the TV industry. And we all have been hearing all the reports with uh, you know with, with lots of folks um, mm-hmm. where there's where there's lines crossed, where there's not a lot of respect, where where um, people and, and we've been hearing from a lot of women who were treated as doormats or worse. Um, but now, how has this been for you as? Having been, you know, having worked for many years in, in the industry, and also your own inner discovery of um, the challenges to find your voice and to be who you are, uh, you know, what's this like for you hearing all these reports? Um, and well, it's, uh, it's ringing a lot of familiar bells, and I have yeah. to tell you, it wasn't only in the uh, entertainment industry because yeah. I was a struggling actor. I worked temp jobs. I worked in restaurants. I worked for doctors. I worked for, um, you know, corporations. And I can think about ten times that I was uh, treated in a very inappropriate way mm-hmm. and um, not so much um, in a sexual abuse way, but yelled at, um, condescended to. I was uh, shoved by one one employer. Wow. Uh, and um, a few times, you know, I guess I, I felt marginalized and demeaned uh, on an audition here and there. But, you know, it was the 1980s, and it, it, people just didn't say anything. I thought, hey, you know what, it's okay for uh, this doctor to shove me against the treatment table because I made a mistake. It's okay because I screwed up. I thought that that, that was okay. <laughs> okay I, I want to pause you there because yeah. that, this is huge, what you're touching on. Okay, so those of you who are listening um, probably are thinking to yourself about, it, it may be flashing for you, memories of of having someone, whether it was an employer or maybe your beloved partner, spouse, uh, or a parent, um, being, you know, or a coach. I recently was in a, uh, a um, mm-hmm. what do you call it, a summit about uh, uh, kind of trying to stop abuse in, um, and bullying in, uh, in sports. There's, there's, this is another area that it's not really been questioned, and, and then now recently with uh, the whole Nassau event, it, uh, it's really come to the surface. Um, so this is probably, as you're listening, this could be touching something. So let's talk about, because it's not so much about the being shoved, which is already horrific and it's not unacceptable, but what I, I'd like you to share with the listeners is a little bit about 
your inner world and how what you were just saying about how you thought maybe it was okay because you screwed up. You deserved it. Oh, I deserved it because I, was, believe that you I made a mistake. Um, I served the coffee cold. I didn't, you know, say the right thing to the patient. Um, I, I was late. I was not, you know, yeah, I definitely, it was my bad, and I deserve to be screamed at and or, you know, uh, yelled at, and yeah. it was okay because I had no self-esteem. And that, it, you know, in, in the 80s, we were the baby boomers, which is what I'm part of that generation. We were taught by our well-meaning parents, many of us, to, uh, you know, be nice, go along with the crowd, don't make waves, uh, you know, turn the other everybody team. better than you treat yourself. Yeah, so so uh, I just I have to jump in, and, and all of you who are listening know that I'm a psychologist, and one of the areas I've done a tremendous amount of work is with people who have been abused, and I just want to make it, you know, put it on the record, make put the record straight here, that you are never... I don't care what you do wrong. I don't care how many times you screw up. You never, no one ever deserves to be treated that way. And I don't care if you're a child. I don't care if you're a partner. I don't care if you're an employee. It's, we can make mistakes, but no one deserves to be treated that way. And I want to, you know, we can talk more about that. We need to go for a break. But um, we can talk more about, uh, you know, how we think about ourselves and um, and and even believe sometimes that we are, we deserve to be um, uh, bullied and harmed in some of these ways. So um, stick around, folks. We'll be right back uh, with uh, more with Ivy after uh, after a few messages. Don't go away. Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal is your go-to product for great health. To maintain potency, Acidophilus Ultra is protected by a natural water-based enteric coating. This daily probiotic supports your health in so many ways. It helps boost your immune system, aids digestion and bloating, and that's just for starters. So remember the name, Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal. Get some now. To find a store near you, visit NewRootsHerbal.com. That's NewRootsHerbal.com For all your live or pre-recorded webcasting needs, come to EarthChannel.com. Get your web-based message out to a select group or the whole world. It's easy. A pioneer in webcasting, EarthChannel.com provides the best products and services to big corporations and government users. And now this same technology is available to you. They have the best EarthCast encoders, servers, and products to meet your technical needs. But wait, don't want to mess with technical stress? No problem. They'll do it for you. EarthChannel.com is your answer. You can use webcasting for lots of things like advertising, marketing, customer support, training, and don't forget, web radio and TV. In fact, you're listening to a live EarthCast right now. So come to EarthChannel.com. Actualize your audio or video webcasting needs today. You can't beat the friendly service or the price. Call EarthChannel.com at 1-800-849-8978. That's 1-800-849-8978. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit yumfoodforliving.com. Yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. If you like to spend your television viewing time learning about some of the things that you may have missed in history class, or if history was your favorite subject, then you should check out the link to the History Channel on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page. Order DVD sets by series or by subject matter right from our homepage while you still enjoy your favorite HealthyLife.net show. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. 
To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. You're listening to HealthyLife.net, the radio network that brings positive talk with positive change to make your world a little better. Teresa Nicasio show. For those of you who are just joining us on today's show, we're talking um, about the Me Too movement. We're talking about abuse. Uh, uh, we're also talking about tips. Ultimately, we're going to be talking more about tips about ways to learn to love yourself. Uh, and we're here with the founder of the Society for Recovering Dormats, Ivy Tobin. So, uh, just before the break, those of you who uh, are just joining us, um, uh, just to catch you up to speed, um, Ivy was talking a little bit about how she well, she used to work in the entertainment industry and as well as other industries. It didn't matter. There was many many situations that she worked in where she found that there were times where um, there were you know maybe a boss would not treat her very well. Uh, she even was mentioned that she was shoved. Uh, by a doctor uh, to the, on the treatment table um, uh, because she had screwed something up. She'd made a mistake and uh, was talking a little bit how she believed. She used to believe that she deserved it because maybe because she did make mess up and that that was how we, we were taught. That's how we you know sometimes can think about this in our society that if we if we do something wrong, whether we're a child, whether we're a uh, an athlete on a sports team, whether we're you know whether we're an actress in a, you know in a program, it doesn't matter uh, that we deserve it. And um, and I really want to talk more about this because this is huge. And this is you know I was talking about how it was in the 80s, but this is as you know you both know this is still going on. And um, and uh, Ivy, I don't know the story, but Ivy was mentioning that she has a story that um, that really kind of undergird some of how her thinking uh, was. It. And so, Ivy, would you be willing to share with us? Because again, you know, listen, I don't know the story either, so we're going to well, be hearing you about know, this together. Um, yeah. It's it's not overnight that uh, somebody uh, is a doormat that has no self esteem that um, just is, uh, allows people to uh, push them around and uh, that they think less of themselves. Uh, it, can, it starts in childhood, Teresa. Uh, I mean, it, uh, I remember uh, very vividly, I, I've had one, uh, one incident happen when I was eight years old and it definitely, I mean, I can absolutely pinpoint that time in my life when my self-esteem was completely obliterated. Um, I had a uh, friend who's uh, actually, he was, I had a big crush on him, and I, I won't say his name, but I was only eight, and I, you know, he, I, he lived up the street from me, and and I would go over to his house every day, and we would play outside. And um, his brother was about 14, 15, quite a bit older than 8-year-olds. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember one day his brother, the my classmate who I had a big crush on, um, said to me, uh, Ivy, I want you to come into... Uh, the, the garage. I want to show you something. And I said, oh, "Okay." So I went into a garage, and the door was shut. At which point, he proceeded to pull his pants down, and uh, he exposed himself to me. Mm-hmm. And I had no clue what he was doing because I was eight, and it was uh, the 1960s or. You know, and it wasn't like today where everybody knows everything by the time they're four. I mean, I was like, what? I mean, I I was just absolutely astonished. And then I remember him asking me to touch it, and I knew that something was wrong. I just knew all the hairs 
uh, on the back of my head were standing up. I felt like I was going to throw up, and I ran out of there, not even knowing why it was wrong or anything, and I ran home. And I went in my bedroom, and my mother came in, and she's like, what happened, what happened? And I was so embarrassed and ashamed that I didn't want to tell my mother, but finally I told my mother what happened. And I I begged her. She got very upset, and I didn't even know why she was getting upset because I didn't know what it meant that, you know, what had happened. I just knew that it was a horrible thing. Mm-hmm. at some level, and um, she, when I told her, she started telling my father, I'm going right over there, and I'm going to talk to Bloody Blah's father and, and tell him, and I was horrified because, you know, this is my friend's brother, and this friend, this boy, my eight-year-old, my first crush, it, he would hate me, mm-hmm. so... Lo and behold, you know, my mother went over there and did talk to the the teenager's father, who was a very prominent um, professor at a college in the town that I grew up in, and uh, that was it. I mean, it was all hushed up after that. The boy got no discipline. Um, his brother, my friend, uh, then turned on me, was mean to me, spread rumors about me. Oh. I was eight. Wow. So wow. that was the beginning. And um, I really think, you know, I mean, I remember this, and I think that was the beginning that laid the foundation for how I would think about myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, Ivy, you know, with this, with this Me Too, you know, during this Me Too time, you, this story is, I'm sure, resonating with many of you listening today. And as you've been listening to Ivy uh, share her story, um, you know, I want to make sure that you take care of yourself as well because it can be, um, it's, it is, it is, it's really wrong, and unfortunately, it happens, and it's not just in the 1960s; it happens. All the time, and and you know, I've you know, many kids when they're four maybe are more educated, but many people still don't know. And even if you do know that, oh, that you know, as little kids, it's you're eight. It's like you, how are you? You don't even know how to process this information. Even if you're told things, you don't really know how to process it. Right. And you, you know, you went in so innocently. You, you, you really had this crush on this boy, and then his big brother wants to show you something. You think, you know, this makes you feel kind of special. And then you step in and you realize it's a trap. And, and, uh, um, and I mean, thank goodness you were able to run away. But how terrifying, how terrifying and confusing um, that. And then afterwards, it's just like life goes on, but you've got this weird memory that you're trying to metabolize and understand. And, um, and right. I mean, I, I didn't get any kind of my mother and father never talked to about it again. They didn't wow. want to discuss it. They that said was it. stay away from uh, the boy and his brother. Stay away from the family and don't tell anybody about this, okay? So the shame, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I think, you know, I'm not, I'm not blaming my parents. I'm not blaming anybody. I really believe that our parents did the best they could. Mm-hmm. They didn't know any better. It wasn't right. like today. Right. But I can, you know, I, I, I truly believe that if it was dealt with in a uh, empowered, insightful, aware way where I was given therapy or I was allowed to talk about it, I was allowed to share it, it wouldn't have impacted me in such a negative way. Wonderful. Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. Wonderful words. Um, and Ivy, I, you know, when we come back, because we're going to need to go head off for another break, but um, I'd like to carry on a little bit more about this uh, uh, and, you know, what your wisdom, you know, you're touching upon some of the wisdom that you have about 
how to do things differently because we want to empower our listeners around this, um, both parents as well as people who have been through similar experiences. So we're going to talk more about uh, the Me Too, um, the Stand Up, Speak Up, all of that with Ivy Tobin, the um, uh, founder of the uh, Society for Recovering Doormats. When we return, don't go away. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's Yum food for living.com. What does HealthyLife.net and Amazon.com have in common? Well, they're both available on the Internet. They both give great value. But most important, most of our positive program hosts and guests are accomplished authors. And their books are available from, you got it, Amazon.com. Now it even gets better than that. Because when you're listening on air to a HealthyLife.net host or guest, you can go directly to Amazon.com and you can order your book while you're still listening to your favorite HealthyLife.net program. So when you hear an author you like, go to the homepage of HealthyLife.net and click on Amazon.com. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five sixty four sixty three. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit yumfoodforliving.com. Yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. Today, the founder of the Society for Recovering Doormats, Ivy Tobin, is with us talking about how she learned to be a people pleaser. Um, and also, she's talking about how this can rob, you know, being a people pleaser and, and some of the things that lead to being a people pleaser um, can rob you of your voice and personal power. Uh, and just before um, the break, as those of you who were listening know, the uh, Ivy was sharing a, a very poignant story that is not, unfortunately, it's not unfamiliar to many of you listening. Uh, it's actually the first time that Ivy has apparently shared this publicly um, about the, you know, the real ins and outs of when she was eight years old and um, had a crush on, on the boy down the street and his big brother you know, you know, invited her to show her something, and it turned out it was um, to um, basically be to to sexually expose himself, and um, and it was very traumatizing for for Ivy. Um, but more important than the actual what of what happened, um, the impact of that on um, Ivy and her self esteem. Um, this was a seed, and so Ivy, you know, let's, let's talk a little bit more about that. And and you know, I'd like you to also, if you would. As you're talking, um, I'd like you to you know, speak to my to the listeners because I know so many of you want to hear from Ivy directly, and for you to share some of um, you know not only the experiences but your wisdom, what you what you've what you've learned, and what you'd like to share with them as, as uh, from this experience. Well, um, that experience happened when I was eight, and it was just a little seed planted for my low self-esteem and um, it really wasn't until um, 
I became, you know, older, and uh, I realized that, you know, that there was another way to live. And I, you know, like I said, it's, I can say that there are ten signs that you can look out for to see if you are engaging in people-pleasing, doormatish behavior. And um, it even led me to putting together a workbook, which I'm very excited about, Teresa. It's called uh, Off the Floor, and mm -hmm. it's a companion workbook to my site, the Society for Recovering Doormats, and I am going to be releasing it online on March 18th. It'll be Ooh. available uh on my website, and I'm going to share links onto my page, and I'll be happy to send you a link. And it's um, a workbook that I think will be very happy, <coughs> will be very helpful to people pleasers. Um, it has the, the beginning is 10 signs that you're a doormat, and these are the 10 signs that you're in the right place, getting the right uh, insight from me. Um, Number one would be accepting and justifying unacceptable behavior. Mm -hmm. Two is assuming responsibility for others' bad moods. Three is blaming yourself for everything, and that's a big one. It's not, it's not our fault. We just mm -hmm. have to remember that. Mm -hmm. And number four, accepting blame from others even if you aren't to blame. Five, uh, continuously apologizing. Mm -hmm. Six, allowing others to demean you by staying silent. Seven, avoiding confrontation at all costs, which I have to just say as an aside, yeah, check, check, and double check for me. <laughs> Number eight, uh, negating your feelings to accommodate others. Oh, and that's another, that would be like a five checker on this mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. Number nine, not happy unless everyone I'm surrounded by is happy. Yep. And ten, feel invisible. And I think my invisibility started as that little eight-year-old child in mm -hmm. the garage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, can't change the past. It is what it is. But I've um, finally figured it out as a seasoned adult and um, uh, if I can help others to feel better about themselves, and um, I love to interact with people, I love to write, I love to create, and it just is a win-win for me in terms mm -hmm. of what I'm doing now and what I have been doing for the past five years. Mm -hmm. So the name wow. of... My new workbook, like I, like I said, is called Off the Floor. And um, are you interested in knowing the title of the chapter, Teresa? Um, no, I, th I think that that's, this is all good stuff. Uh, what okay. I, I think in terms of the, the names of it, there's anything in particular you want the, our, re our listeners to know, um, what I'm going to do once you have the link and it's up and running, folks, this is like right around the corner. I'm very excited uh -huh. to a bunch of this, is um, we'll add that the link for uh, Ivy's, um, Ivy's workbook, folks, off the floor uh, to her page. And you know that uh, for all the shows, every for every single show there's a I create a web page uh, for profile page for each of the like each of the guests each of the, the the shows and on it has all the information you need links to Ivy's this have links to Ivy's Facebook her website uh, we'll have you know you know maybe in big bold about the um, off the floor and so and I make it so it's easy you just click on on the, the image of the words and you go straight to those places uh, so be sure to pass that along because I'm, I know a lot of, of you folks out there will 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 love to um, to have access to that to those materials. And I just want to, you know, as you're speaking, you're, I'm, I'm thinking a lot about someone else who's such an inspirational woman, and for many of us, and actually, uh, it's Oprah Winfrey's mentor, uh, Maya Angelou, who, mm -hmm. when she was very young, you probably know this story. She wrote a book called uh, "I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings." I, that, I don't remember when that was was. Uh, published. It was the 90s, or I don't know exactly. I read it a long, long time ago. 
But, um, you know, her story of also being sexually abused, and after that she became mute. She stopped speaking for many, many, many years, uh, effective mutism, and they didn't know why, and it turned out it was associated with having not just the abuse, but because of how it was responded to um, was so traumatizing for her, and um, it took her a long time to recover, and that's a whole other story. Uh, but, folks, we have another break. We will be coming back with Ivy for a little bit more uh, of this goodness and information. Uh, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal is your go-to product for great health. To maintain potency, Acidophilus Ultra is protected by a natural water-based enteric coating. This daily probiotic supports your health in so many ways. It helps boost your immune system, aids digestion and bloating, and that's just for starters. So remember the name, Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal. Get some now. To find a store near you, visit NewRootsHerbal.com. That's NewRootsHerbal.com Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463 that's 604-445-6463 if you're like the 8 out of 10 women that say finding jeans that fit is a problem well your problem is solved Lee Jeans has done extensive research and they have jeans that fit there's even an online Lee Fit Finder so you can find the right fit for you. Imagine jeans that instantly slim you with a custom fit and no gap waistband. And guys, kids, Lee has jeans for you too. Click through to Lee's jeans on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page and get what fits. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five sixty four sixty three. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book, Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio, is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com. Or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net. Welcome back. You're listening to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. If you're just tuning in, author and founder of the Society uh, for Recovering Doormats is with us sharing tips about how to reclaim your voice and personal power. And Ivy is going to be sharing with us in this last segment. Uh, she's got 10 tips that uh, specifically uh, will help you if you're a people pleaser. Um, and don't, know, don't worry if you miss, all, miss some of them because we will have all of this information, these tips, um, and, uh, and even maybe some of those signs. We're going to put all of these things that you need onto the, uh, on the TeresaNicasio.com website. We'll have the information either on it or hyperlinks that you can access everything. And you just go to Ivy's page and you will be good to go. Um, so let's just get firing at it because we've got, there's challenges that we've been talking about, but now we're looking at the solutions because um, that's, that's, that's the most empowering place. So, you know, go for it, Ivy. 
Okay. Here you go. Here are the ten tips. We call them the ten metaversal tips over at the Society for Recovering Doormats to stop pleasing, people pleasing. Number one, realize that you have a choice. Number two, set your priorities. Number three, consider if you're being manipulated. Number four, say no like you mean it. Number five, don't give a list of excuses. Number six, don't apologize if it's not your fault. Seven, set clear boundaries and follow through. Eight, don't be scared of the fallout. Nine, pat yourself on the back when you've been successful. And ten, realize you can't please everybody. Mm-hmm. And those, those are simple, simple tips to help you, you know, stand up, speak out, get off the floor, and be out the door. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, they're, they're simple, but they're not necessarily easy. Uh, when it comes they're to not the- easy, <laughs> yeah. but, but they're-, they're things that everybody can think about and can do if you didn't realize you had a choice. So for a long time, I never knew that I had a choice. Yeah, yeah. And I know that with each of those, you know, with your off the floor program, you, you know, you're, you even go into more detail and about how and all that. I'd like to highlight the one that, st- that stands out for me as, you know, the therapist uh, um, that I think is oftentimes one of the biggest, one of the biggest reasons, uh, things that keep, keep people trapped in that, people pleasing. And that is the fear of the fallout. Fear of the potential fallout if, if you speak up, if you tell your truth. Um, that, you know, again, many of you may be thinking, yeah, well, I really want to, I want to have my voice, but, like, uh, horrible things would happen. Horrible things would happen. It would be a catastrophe if I said this. Or, or. And so do you want to speak a little bit about, more about that particular uh, tip? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think that it's, you know, just fear is the biggest enemy of people pleasers. And uh, because we're afraid to disappoint, and um, that's why a lot of us uh, just will be accommodating and 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 stay silent. And uh, when you speak out, there is always the chance that your friends are not going to like what you say, and they're going to you're going to have a confrontation. Or even worse, they're going to leave. But I think it's important to know that if people that who are authentically your friends, people that authentically love you and cherish you and appreciate you, are not going to leave you because you have a difference of opinion or because you've shared something that is uncomfortable for them to hear. Mm-hmm. And if they do, then you're better off without them because they were phantom friend. It wasn't real. And I think, you know, as I get older, I only want real, authentic people in my life. And the rest, I, they're doing me a favor if they leave. So, uh, and as far as um, being afraid of the fallout of what's going to happen, um, <sighs> It isn't really our responsibility to think about that, I think. I think it's just our responsibility to be truthful to who we are and to live our life authentically and truthfully and um, make no apology for that. Yeah. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to interject here a, a big yeah. plug for... Um, for seeking uh, support, whether it's someone who is someone you know you can trust in your world, whether it's a, um, a, a parent, a friend, um, a teacher, um, someone who you can trust, because, you know, there's, there's a fear of, of uh, uh, things 
that, you know, of disappointing, but there also sometimes can be a fear of retribution. Um, and, and I know because of the work that I've done that sometimes people are threatened that if you don't, if you say something, um, I'm going to do something to, you know, someone you love or your pet. And there can be very serious things that can be there. And um, so there may be times if you really are feeling afraid of, of something serious that could come out of this, uh, even if it's not physically serious like one of those things, but um, but emotionally could be very, very difficult either way. Um, you know, along all of this, if you can get the support of a counselor, a therapist who is trained and um, can help you ensure um, uh, you know, more safety as you, as you do this, learning this new way of being and speaking up and, and living your truth that, um, cause I don't want you to go and do something and then feel like, um, if something really bad happens that, uh, you know, you, you, you didn't foresee. So get some support that's really, really important. Um, and those are, um, I just want to thank you for those tips, uh, Ivy. You're, oh, you're doing welcome. amazing work. And, again, you can learn more about Ivy on the website. And then uh, you'll go to her website and go to her Facebook page, which is going virtually viral. It's, like, really just, like, exploding with, with people are, are joining that um, that community. But I want to say this was just really wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ivy. It was a real pleasure having you on today's program. Well, I've been looking forward to this, and um, it's been great. I want to thank you for uh, finding me and mm -hmm. encouraging me to come on your show, and I've had an absolute wonderful time talking with you, Teresa. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And I want to thank all of you out there listening uh, you know, for tuning in today. Um, I know that some of the material was challenging to listen to, but it's also to hear about, you know, the real things going on. I hope you enjoyed the program. Um, I also want to thank our sponsor, New Roots Herbal, for their generous support in making this show possible. Uh, be sure to tune in next time when Dr. Debbie Joffe Ellis will be talking about the work of her late husband, the grandfather of CBT, uh, Dr. Albert Ellis, and how she's keeping his work and memory alive. And for more information about this show, uh, and also to access the free wellness resources that are all available at Teresa's Wellness Hub, visit my website at TeresaNicasio.com, T-H-E-R-E-S-A-N-I-C-A-S-S-I-O.com. Uh, I'm Teresa, and this has been the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. Until next time, have a great week.